We'll go ahead and get started. And if I'm a little distracted, I'm still letting people in this morning. But thank you so much for joining us this morning. My name is Joni Parsons, of course, co-creator of Rebel 11, along with Monica Smith, who is heading back to Sun Valley this morning. So she will not be joining us. Um, we created Rebel 11 as a connection between women. And as I was thinking about it this morning, it is really that golden thread that connects us. And it's those types of conversations, you know, informative, edgy, timely, grounding topics that we want to bring to our community. And we so appreciate you being part of the Rebel 11 community. I've been thinking a lot about grounding and inner peace. And we've certainly needed that over the course of the last eight months and certainly the last week as we've been on this little roller coaster ride. Um, but over the course of the last eight months, I've really been focused on things for me that have been important. And I just wanted to share those things with you before Jamie gives us more tips and tools, but mine are more um, things that have just, when I was out of, out of my mind a little bit and not grounded, what brought me back was in walking. I walk every day and I try to be in nature as much as possible. Or even if I'm walking, you know, in our little urban neighborhood to appreciate, you know, the flowers and stop and smell them or say hi to, you know, a person with their dog. And, you know, I have two, two golden retrievers. So, you know, there's a lot of um, opportunity for meeting and greeting. The other thing that I've done is, um, you know, I have a garden here in Seattle. And so I've always tried to surround myself with fresh flowers on a weekly basis. And this week, my garden's, you know, definitely at the end here in November. So I bought myself, I decided I needed a very big bouquet for this for this week. So I want, I just put it here because I think it's so beautiful and um, it's definitely brought me joy over the course of this um, roller coaster that we've been on. And then also I light a candle every day. So when I work here, this is where I work every day now. Um, I just look at that and it brings me back. It brings me back to me. And so those are three of the things that have brought me some inner peace over the course of time. And I'm so excited to hear from Jamie this morning. She really is, has been, and is one of our um, most cherished person that we have to join us. And as I was telling her this morning, she has such a gift to share love and light. And if you look at her Instagram, or if you just hear her speak, as you will shortly, she has an incredible gift to bring us to love and light, which is what we all need so much of right now, as well as to be able to share love and light as well. Um, I included her amazing and impressive bio in the email that I sent you all this morning, and you definitely need to read it. She is amazing. And with that, Jamie, I'm so honored to welcome you here this morning. And thank you so much for sharing your time um, with us. So take it away. And I'm so excited to hear what you have to say and share this morning. Thank you. Thank you, Joni. My heart is just so warm and fuzzy right now. <laughs> um, before, before you all hopped on, Joni and I were talking and it was a, a teary conversation of just acknowledgement for um, that we are all, all of us, you're on here for a reason and that something drew you here, something called to you, something in your heart, um, something in your soul. And uh, as Joni and I were saying to each other, how we were thanking each other for coming into each other's lives, I'd like to thank each of you for making this time for yourself, making this time for your soul's calling. And even if you're like, I don't really know fully why I'm here, but I'm just here for some, I just know I'm meant to be here. That's, that's your intuition. That's your soul talking to you. And so thank you for your courage for showing up and for being on this planet right now during this time of so much transformation and so much change, it is not easy to be on this planet right now and you are here and you are doing it. 
and it is not easy at all. And so that's why we're here together though. We're doing it together. And so Joni and Monica, um, I'll extend that for as, she, as she's driving and just a deep thanks to Rebel 11 for having this um, gathering. So what this will look like today is we'll talk a little bit about inner peace and grounding and everything, what that entails and it's going to be interactive though. So I invite you to interact on the chat section. I'll be asking some questions and you're welcome to answer on the chat section. If you prefer to have uh, a notebook handy and just wanna take some notes, you can do that too. Uh, I recommend having some water handy too. Anytime we're doing visualizations and meditations, it's, it's a energy work. You're moving energy inside your body and that uh, help, the water helps the movement. So uh, getting some water is helpful too. And so here we are in this moment. And yes, there's been a lot of changes just in the, in the last day, in the last week. Um, my intention for this time is not to, here you go, inner peace, right? Here you, here's inner peace for you. Um, that's, that's not exactly how this works. Huh? I wish it was, wish it was like that. Um, I know I've would have like, could, could have used that once in a while. Um, but what I'm hoping to do at this time is to hold a space, to offer a space for you to dive deeper into yourself, to tune into what your heart is saying to you right now, to tune into what you need right now, and also to wrap a warm, cozy, loving blanket around you uh, of love and light, uh, sticking with those words, love and light. And so I'd love to start just with a check-in. Um, if you can share one word to describe how you're feeling right now, just type it in to the chat section, one word to describe how you're feeling. This is a way that we can get a gauge for how we're all doing collectively in this group together. And then we'll do a check-in like that at the end too. So how are you feeling? One word to describe you, type it in. I have a feeling I'm gonna be kind of curious of, of the different words that are gonna be popping in. Elated, caffeinated, peaceful. Yep. I'm feeling especially curious right now. Um, so I'll, I'll say curious, happy. Thank you for sharing invested mixed emotions. Yep. Yep. Yes. And if, if you prefer, you can always send them to me privately too. If you prefer not to share them with everybody, you're welcome to share um, in the private section to me and um, open also thrilled. Yep. So a variety of emotions today. <sighs> and here we are. Heather Petrie, hi. <sighs> so <sighs> let's pause before we go any further. Just notice, let's do a check-in with our body. Check in where your feet are. If they're grounded on the ground, if they're floating in the air, if they're up on a chair, and notice where your thoughts are at. And noticing the physical sensations in your body. Just checking in and noticing the energy in your stomach. And the energy in your heart. And the energy in your head. And just as you, as you observe what's going on in your body energetically and physically, go ahead and share that if you'd like. Share that in the chat section. I feel like a lot is going on inside of me right now. Um, yeah, we'll get deeper into that. But notice what was going on inside of your body and notice what's coming up for you and feel free to share that in the chat section or just write it down or observe for yourself. You might notice a busy head. You might notice kind of beating heart. Maybe the stomach feels, it might feel a little queasy. It might feel happy. It might feel full. It might be feel kind of like excited and nervous. The reason I ask is because we have so many energetic connections within our body from our head to our heart, to our soul, our, our, our sense of um, self-worth inside of our gut and our gut instinct, our second brain, or if you will, maybe it's our first brain, our gut instinct. So just tuning into that area just for a moment, even 
and grounding down to our feet, just noticing where we're at, just noticing is a wonderful place to start so we can tell the difference of say through this session. So let's dive into, and, and thank you for sharing kind of what, what you're feeling like right now. Let's dive in if you're open to it, what inner peace and grounding is, because that's really what the session is about today. So we have been through a roller coaster, through a storm. I, I think of it quite a bit like a storm these past eight months and a lot is coming up in the world and a lot is coming up within us at the same time for many reasons. And when it's coming up, it can feel so overwhelming. It can be easy to lose our sense of self about who we are, or we, we are easily questioning who we are. And perhaps that is the opportunity here to ask ourselves really, who do we wanna be during this time in our lives? Who do we really wanna be? How do we wanna move through our day? How do, we want, how do we wanna move through this storm? And when I think of grounding, I think of a tree. I think of a tree and rooting down into the ground and the roots are what help the tree stay up. So if there's a storm going on, no matter what the weather is, and as we're moving into winter here, we're in fall and it's, today is a very frosty day here in Port Townsend, Washington. We've had a lot of windy days. The trees have been rocked every which way and the ones that have been staying are the ones that are rooted deep, deep, deep into the ground. And those roots, are almost like our behaviors, our tools, the things that we use, as Joni mentioned, that help us stay grounded. There, there are things that help us stay rooted when there is a storm around us. So consider a sense of grounding your tools. When I want to, to feel grounded, I need my tools, I need my behaviors or my ways of being or my habits that help me feel grounded. And I really feel that if your roots are your sense of grounding and those roots are your tools. So for Joni, it's walking in nature, it's gardens, it's, it's talk, talking with people with when she's walking her dogs. Those are the roots. Now what helps nourish those roots though, I feel like is our self-trust. Is trusting in ourselves that we really know that we're here, that we are, in, we are meant to be here that this is where we're meant to be, this is where our roots are meant to be, that, and our self-trust, and trust in the universe for that matter, because the soil runs deep all over the land. Our self-trust nourishes our sense of grounding. Where does the inner peace come in though? The inner peace to me comes in when the tree is up, and as the tree is swaying side to side, it's the, the sense of, I am still a tree when I am dancing in the storm. I am still a tree when I am dancing in the wind. I am still a tree when I'm being bent so far over that I feel like I'm about to crack. And then I'm being brought back up because my roots are deep and I've been nourished from my soil, from my self-trust. So think of an inner peace as almost like a knowing, a knowing versus a tool. The tools help cultivate the inner peace. So the grounding are our tools rooted in self-trust and trust in each other and trust in the universe and trust in this a greater purpose happening right now and that everything is transpiring for our highest good. And then, the self, and then the inner peace is this knowing within it, us. That knowing, that sense of, uh, it's not confidence, I don't feel like. It's awareness and love. I really do think that there's a sense of love in that, the sense of, of love. It's almost like the self-trust nourishes our roots, which nourishes the tree and it's filled with love. And, it's a, and the love allows us to bend and move a little bit. Now, these are just visuals that I offer. I'm an extremely visual person. And so I'm going to be offering metaphors throughout this conversation today. And, uh, and some will speak to you, some may not speak at all. I ask in this time today that this is, this is an open, it's a safe space, and it's a space for you to simply to pocket whatever resonates with you. And if something doesn't 
doesn't resonate with you, you can just set that aside. No problem. So another way I think of inner peace is uh, Heather Petrie's on the, on the call today with me, um, a fellow Olympian and teammate, amazing human being. And so you might resonate with this too, PD. And I know we've all been in water in some capacity. We played water polo together. We've taken baths, showers, swam, right? And we've all been in water in some different way. If you've ever put your head underwater, you notice that silence that happens when you put your head underwater, your ears underwater. During games, if there was a lot of wild sounds, and especially after I got scored on as a, as a goalkeeper, as a professional goalkeeper, I had to really recenter. So I didn't let it let getting scored on get to me. And so after I get got scored on, oftentimes after I threw the ball, ball back to center before we started the game again, I'd go underwater for a moment. So it'd be loud and wrestling, crazy out of the water. And then I'd go in the water and it would just be silence. And I would take that silence for a moment and I'd bring it back up with me. So even though the storm around me was still going on, just being in the moment of silence in solitude, for me, that was very nourishing. That was my grounding tool that allowed me to come back up into the storm and be a little more present. Another way we can think of this is being in the eye of a storm. All right, we're coming up on winter, rain is happening, depending on where you are, we might have different types of storms. And think of everything going on around us in our world, globally, in our country, this morning, this week, everything, elections, pandemic, whatever is triggering, whatever is triggering emotions for you, those storms that are coming up and around us, right? How can we tap into and maybe find ourselves a little bit more in the eye of the storm? Because we don't change the storm. The storm is happening for a reason. Storms happen. They're part of nature. So can we find ourselves in the eye of the storm? That's something to explore today. And my intention is that as we gain these grounding tools, and also just this grounding moment because you've dedicated this time for yourself, which is just so beautiful and rich with delicious yumminess that you're able to find yourself in the eye of the storm more often compared to outside of the storm or in the storm. And the more often that we are able to bring ourselves back to that center, just like the tree that's bending, we're able to bring ourselves back to center. The more often we do it, the easier it is for us to tap back into it. Now, the intention here I do really want to emphasize is never to only be in the eye of the storm or to only stay so rigid that you are always centered because a tree that's so rigid is going to crack and break. There's been trees breaking all over around us and they're rigid and they're hollow and they're not really full of lots of love anymore. Just lots of bugs who like to eat them. So we need that flexibility to be able to actually be in a storm. So the purpose here is not to avoid a storm. The purpose is not to avoid reality. The purpose is to decide what actually resonates with you and what actually is most important to you, where you want to spend your energy, where you want to spend your time, how you want to spend your focus and where your heart is actually leading you. So if your heart is leading you to focus more on you, spending some time by yourself, or maybe talking with a friend compared to even working, Listen to what your heart is telling you today. It's telling you something. I've experienced many shifts in the last number of months, taking a break from work, spending more time, as Joni mentioned, out in nature, in solitude, uh, ocean swimming, and things that I hadn't been doing as much to ground myself. Those I've been finding, I needed those for my own tools to really ground my feet. And for a while, I want to acknowledge this, it felt like a little bit like, am I avoiding life? Am I avoiding reality? What's going on? I'm still staying up to date with things. And I'm saying that because sometimes we can feel like that there's shoulds in our life, right? These, I should do this. I should do that. And I encourage you to acknowledge right now, hmm, what shoulds are coming up even in my own conversation right now in my head for being here today or for maybe thinking about this inner peace or thinking about grounding. Notice any of those shoulds, these expectations that we set upon ourselves that are dancing around us a little bit. They kind of um, make the storm rise a little. 
they do for me. <laughs> um, Monday mornings are often a case of the shoulds. I, I tell myself it's like a, a day of the a case of the shoulds. <sighs> so we've talked about a visual perspective that I've offered about our roots, grounding down, rooted in self-trust and reaching up through love and inner peace and being able to dance with the storm, not getting rid of the storm, but simply dancing with it. And remember, that actually helps us grow and be more resilient and actually flourish when the springtime comes for each season. Uh, we're in a cycle here. We're in a cycle of seasons. Nothing stays the same, right? We're just learning to dance right now in this moment. I'd love to hear for you, what does inner peace mean to you? So if you want to take a moment, take a deep breath in, what does inner peace mean to you? And feel free to type it in the chat section or simply journal it or simply just reflect and let it absorb into your beautiful body. I'm going to take a sip of water while you're doing that. What does inner peace mean to you? And there's no wrong answer here. There's literally every answer is the right answer because it's your answer, which makes it special and awesome in every way. Mm. Trusting what I cannot see. Whew. Yeah. The visual that comes up for me, Petey, when you say that, trusting what I cannot see thinking about that dancing with the wind is we don't see the wind. We don't see wind really. We see the trees moving and we can't see it, but we know it's there. And knowing that the wind does serve a purpose too. <laughs> Never having to worry about anything else. Worry, yeah, what a strong word that is. That, that worry, right? Um, when we worry, we really are taken out of our present moment. We're taken out of the now and we're put in either the past, thinking about the past or we're thinking about the future. So it's really difficult for us to really feel inner peace to and, and, and joy when we are worrying about something else. So true. Yeah. Being able to easily let go. Yes. Just feel it. Okay. I feel that. I feel the feel the the um, the leaves hitting me. <laughs> I feel the the other branches from the other trees falling on me. Can I just let that go? Can I let it just pass by? Let it flow through me, or is it like all oh, getting stuck on me? Yeah, getting stuck. Mm, that's a big one. I think we're gonna we're gonna dive into that a little bit for our visualization too. So we'll, we'll think about that. Feeling connected to my heart and soul. Yes. Yes, paying attention to what I know from the inside rather than what I'm hearing or experiencing from the outside. I'm, I'm sensing, Julie, that, that sense of, again, the, the listening inward versus listening outward. Yes. And, mm, thank you so much for sharing. So it, it seems like there is this theme with everybody, this, this awareness, sense of awareness of what inner peace is for them. And Let's, let's go there for a moment. What is important to you about feeling inner peace? I have a feeling we wouldn't be on this call otherwise if it wasn't important to us. So I'm curious, what is important to you about feeling inner peace? What is important to you about feeling inner peace? What is important to you about feeling inner peace. These are questions I ask often in, in my one-on-one -on -one coaching, and it helps us dive into really the motivation, the, the yearning, your heart's calling, your intuitive wisdom, your intrinsic motivation for why you want something to happen, why you want to bring something into your life. And the more we're aware of it, and more clarity we can have on what's around us or what we're, we want to feel, then the easier it is to actually feel it. Oftentimes we realize we can actually tap into it pretty quickly too. It's pretty neat. Yes. 
taking care of myself so I can show up for others to feel grounded, calming, ability to focus, not having to feel like I'm walking on eggshells all the time, right? Yeah, because those are pokey. Oh, yeah. Helps me feel calm. So it sounds like, and Lori, strength to flow within my own rhythm. It, it sounds like this grounding really serves a purpose for each of you. Excuse me, the inner peace. The inner peace shows, has a purpose for each of you. Now, with the inner peace having a purpose, we know it's important to us. We know what it means to us. What about grounding? What does grounding mean to you? What does it mean to feel grounded? What does it mean to feel grounded? Mm, safe. Oh, yes. Really rooted with that. We're speaking with roots, right? Rooted or root chakra, the energy of feeling safe. Oh, wow. Secure in my choices. Grounded for me is to feel balanced in myself. I feel like that whole connection, Danny, this connection from rooted to balanced within the whole body. Again, I'm picturing this tree that's rooted and also it's able to balance itself amongst whatever's going on around it. Feeling like I'm in control of my life and not others. Yeah, sending your energy, Matilda, it sounds like in a, air, in a place that um, serves you, serves you um, well versus you know, sending energy in a place that is draining, draining our energy. Securing my choices, like there's a foundation for everything. I'm hearing this foundation, I'm hearing safety, I'm feeling, hearing this, this strength, security. Mm, yeah, the roots really, really do picture, do pop up. Wow. Well, with that said, I think it's time we go into a visualization. And the reason I think that's coming up for me is I wanna make sure that there's a little time afterwards too for us to kind of check in about how that visualization resonated with us, this meditation. I say it's a visualization and a meditation because the meditation piece, we are breathing, we are focusing inward, and we are also going to be seeing things. And if, if you're not, maybe if you feel like you're like, I'm not someone who sees things. Um, by seeing things, I mean you visualize, like I'm visualizing myself, for example, I'm visualizing myself um, walking in or stepping into my car. Or visualizing myself step, stepping out of my door. Okay, we can see that. We can see ourselves do that. It's like that. We're just visualizing this tree and things like that. So it's, it's kind of a combination of both. So what I'd love to do at this time, now that we have this awareness for ourselves of what inner peace feels like for us, what grounding feels like, I'd love to take us into a place of recognizing, well, we can cultivate this grounding, the sense of grounding. We can also acknowledge that things in our life throw us off from feeling balanced, from feeling secure, from feeling safe. And sometimes they are out of our control because we are literally in a storm and we don't control the storm itself, right? We don't control the weather. We don't control what other people do. We do, however, control whether our, our, what we choose to do with that energy, let's say, what we choose to do with what's being thrown at us or the energy that's coming towards us. We do also have the choice to create boundaries for ourselves. And well, that's for another conversation. I'd like to focus a little bit more though on this, this awareness of really what's in our roots right now and what our soil is like right now and then shifting to bringing in love and light. So I hope that makes sense a little bit. If not, well, we'll work it out in the meditation. <laughs> so what I'd love for you to do, I invite you to do is get in a really comfortable, cozy spot. 
for yourself. Um, if you do lay down, just know that that's telling our body that we're ready to go to sleep. So if that's what your body needs right now, do it. Otherwise, I, uh, you can stay seated up and get cozy and comfortable. I invite you to uh, minimize any distractions, notifications, if possible. And we'll just get going. Are we ready? Yeah. I'm going to take that silence as a yes. <laughs> Sorry, cracking myself up here. All right. Ah. So here we go. Go ahead and close your eyes if you feel comfortable with that or soften your gaze. And just like we did at the beginning of our session, we're just going to tune inward here. And imagine our feet just getting a little heavier, noticing our body sensations, noticing any aches, any discomfort, any feelings. And notice your breath. Ah. Maybe even feeling your heartbeat. And knowing that while you are in your space, that we are here together and we are here together in a safe, secure and loving space. And go ahead and imagine yourself surrounded by light, surrounded by love and light. And you can even imagine all of us surrounded by love and light, each of us all together, knowing that we're sharing in this experience together and that we are bringing more light to the world right now just by being ourselves in this very moment with whatever we're feeling in this moment. And know that whatever you are feeling is okay. Breathe in through your nose and out through your nose if that feels okay. Starting to tell our body to slow down. And whatever you're thinking is okay too. We're going to have thoughts in and out of our mind and in and out of our head. Just imagine that they're passing through, kind of like the wind passing through a tree. Just passing through, acknowledging them. Go, oh, hello, thought. Thank you for sharing. Okay, see you later. And bring your focus down to your feet. And from your feet, imagine roots are taking shape and reaching down into the ground. They move through wherever you are sitting or standing or laying, and they are reaching through to reach the earth, the soil, and they reach all the way down. And they keep going and going and reaching through rock and soil and crystals, and they reach all the way even to the center of the earth. And they reach to the center of the earth, connecting you to the center of the earth, to mother earth. And your roots reach deep and wide. Our roots are connecting us to the earth to nature. So even if we are not surrounded by trees right now, know that you can connect to nature and to earth right now in every moment, if you choose, when you choose. And you are there now. Now, a beautiful thing about the earth and the beautiful thing about our universe is that we have the ability to shift energy, if you will. What I mean by that is we can 
some days, you know, we've, we have moments where we feel angry. And then we go out for a run or we go out for a walk and then we feel lighter. That in and of itself is a shifting of energy. So imagine your body is almost like a tree right now. And what we're going to do is we're going to move that energy that's in your body right now through your roots into the earth and the earth is going to accept it. The earth is going to accept this energy because it knows how to change the energy into, to alchemize it into something that is nourishing for it. So whatever you choose to give to the earth today, to give through your roots, Know that the earth can accept it, the earth wants it, and it will alchemize it into an energy that is nourishing for it. So before we absorb our inner peace, our sense of self-trust through the roots, we're going to actually let some go, let some, whatever we're storing in, let it go first. We're going to let go first, and then we're going to absorb, bring in, if we choose. It's always your choice. So imagine inside your body inside your tree, all of our emotions that we carry with us. Now imagine our emotions as tangible things. So keeping the theme of Mother Earth, imagine your sadness is the rain, your anger is fire, your grief is a heavy, heavy rock. So heavy, it's, it's, tough to pick up. Happiness and joy is sunshine. Frustration and confusion is cloudy fogginess. And if there's any other visuals that resonate with you, create them. These emotions are tangible things. They're weighted. They're quantifiable. They're measurable. They exist. And they're separated from you. To tap into our inner peace and the more to tap into our intuition, we tap into our emotions. That's where our intuition lies in our emotions. So the more we recognize what we're feeling, the easier it is for us to really feel intuitive and connected to that sense of peace. So notice what's inside of you now. Is it a giant lake full of watery tears, almost like against a dam, just ready to break? Is it a whirling fire swirling around with heavy rocks of grief? Or maybe it's sunshine coming out behind the clouds shining through on a cold day after a storm. Just notice what's coming up for you inside of you, whether it's a storm, whether it's a calm and peaceful day and honor that, that whatever you're feeling is okay. And by acknowledging what you're feeling, by acknowledging these emotions, these storms, this water, this fire, whatever it may be, that allows us to move it through our body. So when you're ready, thank whatever it is that's inside of you for being there. And imagine it's flowing out through your legs, into your roots, into the ground. And as it reaches the earth and the soil, imagine it just changing into a gold, gold dust. And just it gets absorbed by the earth, transmuted into a gold dust that ends up nourishing the soil of the earth.
Give yourself time through this. If it helps as you breathe in, you think whatever you're feeling and then exhale, breathe it out through your legs and roots. And notice if you're trying to force it out. <laughs> and honor that maybe it's not ready to move yet. Maybe something else is ready to move though. Or honor that maybe, maybe it's just moving slowly, like kind of some gooky ooze, <laughs> oozing, out the, oozing out of the roots. I think that's what I've got coming out of my roots right now, some gooky, oozy, sludgy pond stuff. <laughs> <sighs> Maybe through three breaths on your own, allow that to flow, creating a little more flow in your body. Noticing where those emotions were, were living, if they were in your gut or your heart or your head and where they had to pass through to reach through your, to your legs, to your feet, to your roots, to the earth. And as you feel that energy flow through your body, again, whatever is coming up for you today, whatever is happening, happening in this visual for you is perfect. And now we're ready to bring in some light, some light and love. And we're going to bring in light and love from two places, because just like a tree, we gain nourishment from our roots, from the soil and the earth. And we also gain our nourishment from the sun and the rain for that matter. So if it feels okay for you, go ahead and imagine a light like the sun shining on your branches, shining on your head and reaching from the top of your head through your body, through the top of your head, almost like it's just so being soaked up. Like after a long winter where the sun is shining on a tree and this tree is just absorbing and reveling in it. The light comes in from the top of your head, through your brain, through your jaw and your neck, and fills up through your neck and your arms, reaching into your torso and it enlightens your heart, brightening your heart space and reaching down, the light reaches down into your gut and reaches all the way down through your feet And even from the feet, at the same time, we've been reaching in light from our body, from the sun. I invite you to decide what you'd like to absorb, what nutrients from the soil, from your roots, what would you like to bring into your roots? whether it's trust, self-trust, trust in the universe, whether it's love, maybe compassion for yourself, kindness for yourself. What helps you feel grounded and rooted? What will strengthen your roots? We're already bringing in light replacing that area in our body that had maybe fire and rain. We're replacing that area with light now. We've moved, we've processed our emotions, we've honored our emotions. We're bringing in light. And please 
welcome whatever it is that you'd like to bring in. Maybe it's self-love. Maybe it's a kind hug for yourself. For me, I imagine trust. Being absorbed from my roots and strengthening them and reaching up. Imagine whatever you'd like to absorb, reaching up into your legs, up through your body, up to your gut, to your heart, to your head space, and even out through the top of your head, connecting out to the sun. This full body flow and connection that you're creating for yourself. Take a deep breath in, letting it go. Another full breath in when you're ready, expanding your back and your ribs, breathing it out. And tuning into your physical sensations now bringing yourself back slowly into your body, into this present space. Notice your physical sensations compared to how they were feeling at the beginning of our meditation and visualization. Noticing your breath, your heartbeat, Begin to slowly wiggle your toes and fingers, maybe moving your shoulders slightly. Taking a deeper breath in and feeling those roots still connected, allowing you to dance with whatever is in your day. Take your time and when you're ready, open your eyes. If you have water, feel free to to get some right now. And uh, feel free to type in how you're feeling, how that experience was for you. Woo, that was, there's a lot going on there. I feel like that sets a big picture of what was going on inside of me. A lot going on in there. Yeah, just type in how you're feeling or what came up for you, any observances you had. I feel so much lighter now, Danny says, thank you for sharing. Enriched and full of dark, creamy chocolate. Lori, that sounds yummy. Is that the soil, I wonder? Or is that really chocolate? Because we'll both sound delightful. I guess that's the same for a tree. Yeah. <laughs> and really blessed to be here. I feel blessed to be here too. Lighter, stable, secure. Julie, thank you for sharing that. I know you shared that you feeling secure in your choices is, is important to you. Excuse me, airy, ooh, PD, I'm picturing again, like the tree, just the air flowing through you. It's like, yeah, it's flowing through me. Renewed and refreshed. Thank you, Marianne. Lighter and more energy. Isn't that amazing, Natalie, that we can be still and we can gain energy from that. We can be still, physically still. We can gain energy from stillness. Lucky and joyful to be here. And yes, airy. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So as as a over as a reflection on that experience, 
what I took you through was a visualization and meditation to acknowledge that in order for us to bring in light into our body, and by light, I mean, this could be love, it could be that sense of joy, it could be sense of optimism, these higher vibrational feelings. In order to feel those, we need to be able to process and let flow through things that are hold, we're holding on to. So if you think of it like, I love to think of it like a house. We have things in our house. And when we have many, many, many things, right? We feel clutter. We feel um, there's, you know, the drawers are packed full. There's, and if you think of those as tangible things, right? There's more density in our house then. And the more we let go, the easier it is to walk, to go through a drawer and find something. The easier it is to walk down the hallway and not trip on a toy. The, <laughs> that's what happens to me. The easier it is to be less distracted by the clutter around us. So, and, and not feel weighted down by it either. So when we physically actually take things out of our house as, as, um, as that concept of tidying up, then, and we declutter, we actually let go of energy as well. So we're doing that for our body. We're letting go of the, re releasing the energy that we no longer need, the emotions that we've, we're like, okay, we're ready to let those go. They don't serve a purpose anymore. And to allow for, for new energy to come in, new light to come in, a new emotion. Now, if you look at that from a scientific perspective, that is saying, I am releasing an old behavior and I'm bringing in a new behavior. Now, the, a new behavior, that doesn't happen overnight. This is a practice. And just as Joni shared at the beginning, there's things that we can, tools that we can have to help us feel grounded. So my intention for this meditation was also to acknowledge that you have the tool within you to notice what you're feeling inside, to honor what you're feeling inside. And then if it helps to visualize it, allow it to pass through. And honestly, simply by acknowledging it, that's what's going to actually help it pass through. We don't have to actually force and physically try to push it out. Usually we can usually just visualize it or acknowledge what we're feeling and that allows it to move. And we also have that ability anytime that you are feeling caught up by a storm, you looked on the phone, got caught up, went down the rabbit hole of what's online, what a news um, article thing you read, just you notice you're just feeling kind of icky afterwards. You're just feeling like kind of low. Um, a conversation with somebody just left you feeling low. You can use the practice of the roots reaching into the ground. So we don't have to do a full visualization, a full meditation to go through this process. We can go through our day and just notice, okay, I'm feeling a little icky right now. I think I need to kind of reach, I need to kind of reach into the ground or my head is just spinning. I need to reach into the ground right now. Okay. Or my head is spinning. What am I really feeling? What's there? Okay. Oh, that's what I'm feeling. I'm feeling, I was feeling some anger. Ooh. Okay. That was coming out in a funny way. I was just like yelling at somebody. Ooh. Okay. Okay. I have some anger. I honor that. So there's these tools, these different ways that we can, we can honor what we're feeling and then allow it to flow through, which makes room again for that, for that light. We can also, as another tool, even just envision sunlight on our head coming into our body. Ah. <sighs> We're wrapping up here. I feel like I could just stay on for a few hours with y'all and actually have, unmute and we just all chat. That'd be really special and delicious. This, I'd love to, to check in after this meditation. We've done the check-in. Now what I'd love to do is you shared at the beginning how you were feeling, one word to describe how you're feeling. I'd love, I invite you to share that here as this check-in about how you're feeling now after this hour. And as you're doing that and sharing a haiku, declutter body, let that stagnant energy pass and flow on through. Love it. Haikus are so fun. <laughs> I've been journaling haikus at times and it's been very releasing. I really appreciate you sharing that, Anne. Thank you. Relaxed. I do want to share, Marianne, you shared that you have a new appreciation for the wealth of resources within yourself. Yes. Yes, they're right there. We all have them. They're there. Peaceful and joyful. Thank you. Thank you, Danny. Smiling. <gasps> so 
So I'm, I'm hearing a shift, a shift of energy that you all did yourself. Even though we were here together, you were the one who shifted your own energy. You were the one who shifted. And I want to say shift. I, I don't want to say ignore or like threw away what we felt. We honored what we felt. And then we made that shift. So tying back to the earlier news, coupled with this visualization made me very peaceful again. Thanks, Sharon. Gratitude, beautiful. Tying back to, we spoke about, you know, this tree. We also spoke about being at the eye of the storm. I'm finding that silence for a moment. Solitude. I invite you to think about maybe the tools that have resonated with you the most from this conversation and what seems to really help you nourish your inner peace. And that is a beautiful first place, first, I don't want to say first step, because this is not a first step. The first, um, a beautiful practice to welcome into our life. So with that said, Joni, I'd love to invite you in and just check in on how you're feeling too. I'm feeling so light and just this sense of calm, Jamie. And like I said, at the beginning, you were just filled with love and light and your ability to share that is just beautiful. I'm just so grateful to be here. And particularly like someone just said with the news this morning and um, everything that's been happening, you know, not only this week, but throughout the last eight months, it really is wonderful to have a tool to be able to use to bring us back. And um, of course, I'm a nature fanatic. So the whole concept of, you know, being able to bring myself back and, you know, with the nature's roots and the tree roots is just so beautiful. And I know that I'll use that a lot. So thank you for that gift. Thank you so much. Thanks for sharing. Um, well, th yes, go ahead, Jamie. Oh, thank you. As a, as a final wrap up for me, I, I just want to let each of you know that um, I'll be sharing out a message through Revo 11, um, just as a follow up in a few days, just to check in on how you're doing. And um, so I invite that opportunity. You're welcome to email me today as well. Uh, I'll I'm going to share my contact just right here as well. But I'm also going to be doing a check-in for, for everyone too. Um, just know that that's available to you. But if, if you want to share anything with me personally, know that you can do that too. And that's beautiful. And so be looking, definitely be looking for an email from me in the next um, couple of days. So Jamie, thank you again. Beautiful, absolutely beautiful. Thank you again for sharing your love and light. It's just so special. It really is.